Welcome to another Retro NAS how-to video. This one we're going to look at the Mr. FPGA device. Uh, it's an emulation device that allows you to play uh, old games and, and simulate old computers uh, very accurately. Uh, and it can mount up your uh, ROMs, your ISOs, your VHDs, your disk image files, all those sorts of things over a CIFS or SMB share back from Retro NAS. And we're going to look at that today. So in a previous video, uh, we set up Samba uh, SMB CIFS sharing, uh, and we copied some files back and forth from different operating systems to prove that was working. Um, so that share still remains. I've still got my uh, RetroNAS share uh, that was previously there configured by Samba. So today we'll configure the uh, Mister Extras, I guess, for that. So um, if you haven't installed Samba before, the Mr. Installation tool will do that for you. Uh, if you have and you've got that running, uh, a few things will just get added to it. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, same old process as always. SSH into our Pi uh, and run the installer. Go to install things and choose Mr. FPGA. Okay, that's all done. Let's see what that looks like from Windows first. Uh, so if we go to our RetroNAS directory and refresh that, uh, we'll see this new Mr. folder that's appeared. Uh, there's a couple of different ways to get to that. If we go into the RetroNAS top level share, you'll notice the RetroNAS share that was there previously, but there's also now a Mr. share as a separate share. So you can either get into it that way or get into it through the top level directory. Both will get you to the same spot. Inside there will be a series of directories. Now these directories will be named exactly the same as the core definitions inside of Mr. Um, so if you were to look at a Mr. file system under the media fat file system, um, you'd normally see all of these directories where you can put different games and things uh, for the different systems. So that's precisely what we'll do today. Okay, so I've got my RetroNAS loaded up over SMB. Uh, I've got my Mr. Share here. And so I want to put some games into uh, these directories that have been created. Um, I can do that just by dragging and dropping pretty simply. I've got an existing system here with a whole bunch of games on it that I want to copy. Uh, and it's just a matter of selecting the game you want uh, and dragging and dropping. That'll get added onto uh, the Mr. system. Now, uh, the speed you saw there won't be um, the same as the speed in your network. I'm doing this uh, over a laptop on Wi-Fi, so it's a little bit slower. If I had wired connections and things, it'll be a little bit faster. We'll do some speed tests later um, from the RetroPie and from the Mr. itself, and we'll see what sort of speeds we can get over a wired connection. Um, but again, you can set all this up on wireless, whatever's convenient for you. But that's as simple as uh, dragging and dropping ROMs from whatever, or games, or VHDs, or ISOs, or whatever you need, uh, dragging and dropping them onto your retro NAS. Uh, the next step from here is going setting that up on uh, the MISTER itself. So we'll do that next. Okay, back at my trusty command prompt, uh, I'm going to log into my MISTER device via SSH. Uh, the default password for that is just the number one. Um, I've got a DNS 
uh, set up here so that uh, the name Mr. points to my Mr. You'll have to put in your IP address if you don't have any DNS stuff set up. Um, but then from here we travel to, from here we travel to Media Fat Scripts with a capital S, remembering that this is a Linux system, so it's case sensitive. Uh, and then we're going to edit, edit. I, mean, I use the nano editor, you can use whatever you like. Nano is built into Mr. so it's nice and easy to use. Um, the CIFS mount. Dot sh script. So that's a script that is going to tell Mr. how to uh, mount your RetroNAS. Uh, we scroll down to the server section here. Uh, you can put in uh, all sorts of things. The um, host name of your Raspberry Pi if you've got some DNS set up. It should advertise itself as RetroNAS on the network. Um, but the surest way is always to put in the IP address to avoid any problems. Um, the share is just called Mr. And again, your username and password. Now, I've made my username and password Pi and Pi, uh, as per all my previous videos. You can make it whatever you like. Uh, a good, strong password is always recommended. Um, and then we scroll down here. So, this local der star uh, tells Mr. to go and find each of the subdirectories and mount them up one by one. Um, so you can delete things that you don't want on the retro NAS side, not on the MISTER side, uh, and it will only mount up the bits that you care about. Um, some additional mount options here that you should just be able to leave uh, commented out. Anything with a hash in front is a comment and will just be ignored. Uh, wait for server true, so that what that does is when the MISTER FPGA device boots up, it will wait uh, for the retro NAS to be available and to be mounted before the menus get shown, which is really useful. Um, make sure that when you are running Mister that you're seeing all the different games and things that are loaded. Uh, and then mounted boot equals true. Uh, setting that to true, make sure that every time Mister restarts, uh, the mount points exist. So, uh, control X to exit, it'll prompt if you want to save, Y for yes, uh, it'll prompt for a file name to write to, and just press enter or return um, to write that default file name. From here, we can just run uh, CIFS mount .sh. Uh, we have to put this dot slash in front as a, uh, it's just a Linux thing to say that you want to run the one in this particular directory, not in some other path. And there we go. It's gone and found the RetroNAS uh, and it's mounted up all the directories in the RetroNAS. Uh, now because we've set this to uh, work on boot, it'll happen every time the system boots up. Uh, but for now, uh, we can just see that it's worked from the command line. Uh, what we might do from here is just pop over to our Mr. FPGA and see what we can see from it. Okay, so over on the Mr. Uh, apologies for the uh, dodgy phone camera footage. Uh, but I've got this on my CRT and I uh, can't be stuffed setting up my HDMI capture to be honest. But anyway, um, we'll go to our consoles, scroll down to uh, one of the consoles that we dropped a ROM in. Now I think in uh, GBA here, uh, we put at least, uh, there we go, that was that one game that we copied across um, from our uh, Windows system. And then if we look at our, uh, I copied some uh, Genesis ROMs as well, or Mega Drive if you're in the PAL region. So these are all the, uh, the Mega Drive ROMs that I copied, which was kind of cool. And likewise, I copied some uh, Super Nintendo, Super Famicom games across. Right, so there they are. So Mr. Seeing them nicely uh, can load up any of those without any problems. Um, let's uh, go see how the best game of all time loads up. And there we go. So that's loading fine straight over CIFS or Samba. Uh, from the RetroNAS device, uh, and it's loading well. All right, so that's working. Let's um, let's do some speed tests in the command line again and see just how fast this goes.
All right, we'll set up here for a quick little uh, speed test. Uh, on the left, I've got my Raspberry Pi device running RetroNAS. On my right, I've got the uh, Mr. FPGA system uh, mounting RetroNAS via CIFS. Um, we can do a special uh, little command in Linux, uh, which uh, what this does is it, it drops the file system cache. So it makes sure that there's nothing um, sitting in cache that would uh, speed up or give a false result on reads, uh, something like that. So I'm just going to do that. Uh, I'll go to my storage Mr. Uh, Genesis folder. And in here, I've just got a test file, one gig file full of random data. Um, and I'm going to read that file. I'm going to send it to a utility called PV, Pipe View. Um, and that's just going to tell me um, how quickly the bytes are sort of whizzing past as it's reading off disk. And then I'm just going to send that to DevNuts. So I'm going to throw that data away. I'm not going to copy it to another file. Um, this is just a pure read test for my interest's sake. So do that. And I'm getting about. 250, 260 megabytes per second uh, off the little SSD. Now, the uh, theoretically, the um, USB 3 port can go up to 5 gigabit, so getting 200 odd megabit, uh, megabytes per second, it's probably about half of what the, the USB 3 port itself can do, but that's not too bad. There's still a, a pretty good speed. It's certainly faster than 1 gigabit uh, Ethernet, which is all that really matters when we're, when we're transferring things via gigabit. Um, so, with that in mind, let's see how that performs on the MISTER side. So I'll go to my uh, scripts folder, I'll just make sure that's mounted. Oh yep, already mounted, good. Um, if I go to my uh, media fat uh, genesis, no, game, no, genesis. There we go. Now I'll just uh, double check that the file system here is actually a CIFS. There it is. So there's my um, my share coming off my RetroNAS, my Mr. Share. Um, it's of type CIFS, um, and that's where it's mounted. So I'm verifying that I'm actually reading off a uh, CIFS share. I'm not sitting on the local um, system reading off the uh, micro SD card. And then uh, same thing. I should be able to see my. There's my test file. Um, let's do my uh, uh, my same drop cache trick, so it'll make sure that I'm not um, it caching anything, I'm not getting any false results. All right, and away we go. So certainly not the. Um, 200 and something megabytes per second, which would be impossible given the one gigabit uh, network adapter on the uh, Mr. FPGA. Theoretical maximum of 100 megabytes per second, but we're not getting close to that. We're getting about half that. Um, and that's not too bad. That's still uh, quite a bit better than what I'd expect off uh, like a, a pretty low end um, micro SD. You probably expect 10 to 20 megabytes a second off those. Uh, depending on what it is, of course, you can get much better ones. Um, the USB 2 port that's in a Mr. FPGA, uh, again, not so great. It's it's pretty slow. So the speeds are pretty good here. All right, and uh, one more thing, I guess, to mention. Um, uh, Porkchop Express, who runs Mr. Add-ons, has done this excellent uh, I.O. speed shootout on Mr. FPGA. Um, and he's done some great testing. He's got a Synology NAS with a whole bunch of drives hooked up. Um, you know, my um, RetroPie is a, a SSD hooked into a USB 3 port. So lots of different options on how you can get SMB over to your MISTER. Um, and we'll have a look at his results here. So his one gigabit per second uh, min-max average, he's sitting about 40 to 50 megabytes per second for his network access, which is what we were seeing. Um, likewise, his micro SD reads and writes about sort of as low as 11, as high as 24-ish. 
um, and likewise with the USB 2 not so great uh, oh, there's a USB read so 22 so um, yeah about 20 odd megabytes per second peak for other options plug-in storage options um, but certainly uh, one gigabit per second Ethernet is the uh, the clear winner in his tests and pretty much uh, my own testing with plug-in storage versus Ethernet storage is much the same so RetroNAS is a pretty good way to set that up um, easily you can do it yourself on anything right you don't need RetroNAS you can go and set it up on, on any uh, SMB storage system that you like you can share it off a Windows desktop or whatever um, but this isn't a bad way to do it if you want something that's also shareable uh, around your other devices that you might have also sharing data of that retro system.